We're doing a series on how to have the perfect credit score of 850 with action steps along the way to get you there no matter how bad your credit might be today. Remember, good credit is critical to get approved for the travel rewards cards that allow you to travel the world for pennies on the dollar, unlocking bucket list experiences you never thought you could afford. This first video in the real meaty part of the series dives into what may be the best known component of the credit score, payment history. Payment history means your record of making on-time payments on credit card minimum balances, on debt repayments, mortgage, car loans, etc. Rent payments, utility bills, cell phone bill, child support, whatever. The easiest way to maintain a good credit score is to pay all of these bills on time, in full, whenever they are due. And the easiest way to fuck your credit score is to not make these payments on time and as agreed with your creditor. Payment history actually gets lumped in with another portion of your credit score, derogatory marks, which we cover in the next video, to form the largest portion of your credit score, more than a third. 35% of your credit score is determined by payment history and derogatory marks. And before you math geniuses call me out, it doesn't mean that those two metrics only count for 17.5% each. They work together. So if you have good payment history, but only fair derogatory marks history, your score range in this portion of the credit score will be stuck in the fair range, despite your good payment history and vice versa too. If your derogatory mark rating is excellent, but your payment history is poor, that whole 35% gets dragged down to the poor range. What kind of numbers are we talking about? At 35% of 850, we're talking about roughly 298 points of your credit score that can be attributed to payment history. Let's look at the chart and see what it takes to have good payment history. As you'll see, the standards are pretty strict. To have excellent payment history, you have to have made 100% of your payments on time. If you make 99 on time payments but miss one, your payment history is now 99% and you're in the good category, having lost 15% or more. Miss 2% of your payments and you're in the fair category. Miss 3% of your payments and your payment history is poor. Miss more than that and your payment history is very poor. Take a look at this fucking chart. When I was in school, 96% was an A and not a low one. If you got 96% on a test, you knew your shit. You probably only missed that A plus because your pencil broke. Not so with payment history. 96% or lower is very poor, and you've sacrificed 180 credit points or more. You'll notice that your payment history is calculated as a percentage. We talk a lot about how having more credit cards can actually improve your credit score and not hurt it. There are a lot of reasons for this, and one of the more backhanded reasons involves your payment history. Let's say that you have one credit card for a 10-month period. That's 10 monthly payments due. You make nine of your monthly payments on time, but shit happens and you're late on one of them. Your nine on-time payments out of 10 gives you a payment history score of 90%. Sounds good, but remember, below 96% is very poor, you bad person, you. Now let's say you have 10 credit cards over that same period of 10 months. That is 100 payments to make, not 10. If you miss one of those payments, your payment history still comes down, but it only comes down to 99%, not 90%, because you only missed one out of 100 payments. That same one missed payment pulled you down to good, whereas with the one card, it pulled you down to very poor. Of course, if you miss payments on all 10 cards that month, then you're back down to 90% and you're fucked. Remember though, the operative word with payment history is on time payments, not how much payments. As Carson and I emphasize, if you want to play the travel rewards credit card game, never carry a balance. You may get rewards, but you will get fucked on interest charges. But if you get into some cash flow trouble and need to carry a balance, as long as you make that tiny minimum payment on the card, you're in good shape as far as credit scores go. We won't get into a situation where size matters until a few videos from now when we talk about utilization. Let's move on to a good news, shit news scenario with payment history. The good news is that if you're a few days late on a payment or two, it may not affect your payment history on your credit score. 
You may owe a late fee, but it's entirely possible that the credit bureaus and FICO will never hear about it. This is because your creditor actually has to report your late payment to the bureaus. If you're just a few days late, they probably won't bother. Oftentimes, it's only if you're 30 days late or more that they'll get frustrated enough to sharpen the credit machete and start hacking at your credit score. But if you've had a few oopsies and paid what you owed fairly quickly, you can still have an excellent payment history. Now the shit news. This is a portion of your credit score that takes a long time to improve. If you have a late payment history on your credit reports from Experian, Equifax, and TransUnion, and you want that perfect 850 credit score, you usually have to wait seven years from the recording date. After seven years, late payment entries on your credit report are eligible to be removed by law. If you have late payment entries on your credit reports that are over seven years old, you can write the credit bureaus and demand that they be removed in accordance with the law. Otherwise, you just have to wait. And while you're waiting, keep paying your bills on time. If you miss more payments, that seven-year clock resets to zero and you have to start waiting again. There are some exceptions to this seven-year itch. If the late payment is inaccurate, you can challenge the entry on your credit report and the bureau will be required to investigate the entry. While the entry is under investigation, credit scoring agencies are required to ignore that entry when calculating your credit score. This can cause a temporary artificial spike in your credit score. Some people even protest their accurate late payment history entries to artificially inflate their credit score for a month, then apply for loans while the credit score is temporarily high. But there's no proof that this is effective, especially if the creditor in question pulls your credit report. If the late payment entry is inaccurate, but the creditor still confirms it, you may have to sue. This can be less intimidating than it sounds. I am not a lawyer, so take this with a grain of salt, but anecdotal evidence suggests that you may not even need a lawyer. If you file a lawsuit pro se, that is representing yourself, requesting that the creditor remove the entry, there's a chance the creditor won't even appear in court and you win by default. After all, you're not asking them to write a check, just write a letter to the credit bureau saying the debt doesn't exist. I'm not a lawyer though, so don't quote me on that. You might also be able to get late payment history removed entirely if you still owe money to the creditor and it's in collections. Ironically, you are in a better bargaining position if you still owe them money. If you paid in full, you have nothing to hold over the creditor's head and they have no incentive to remove the credit mark. They'll appoint themselves God on high and tell you, tough luck, you should have paid your bills on time. Let that be a lesson to you. But if you still owe money, you have something they want and they turn from God on high to Ferengi traders right quick. You might be able to negotiate payment in full of the debt if they expunge your credit record. Pro tip, it costs them nothing to expunge your credit record. They can do it at will. Don't let them tell you it's policy. Or if they do, try to escalate to a supervisor. Someone in that fucking office has the authority to call Equifax and say, remember Jane Doe's late payment? Forget about it, never happened, marriage annulled. If your account is in collections, it could actually get easier. Many third-party collection agencies have adopted a practice of offering to expunge your credit entry if you pay in full on the first contact. But listen up. If you hang up the phone or get disconnected or ask for some time to think about it or whatever, they might be obstinate on the next call. The goal is to get you to pay on the first contact and they may stonewall you on the second call saying it's against policy to remove the mark after the first call. This is punitive and annoying, but you can sidestep it by being prepared to pay in full when you call the collections agency the first time. Your payment history could be pristine tomorrow if you take advantage of this policy. The points will come back almost immediately because the poor payment history gets removed. It's like it never even happened. Remember though, you can usually only get this deal if you pay in full. If you can't afford that and want to reach a settlement for a partial payment, you usually have to eat the bad credit entry in the process and wait out the full seven years. Those are some of the ins and outs of payment history, but we're not done with this fat 35% piece of the pie on our journey towards perfect credit. The next segment of your credit score, derogatory marks, counts just as much, and we're going to get into it right the fuck now. 
Make sure to hit the thumbs up if you like this content. Follow the channel and hit that little bell icon so that your phone buzzes every time we vomit some content out there. Make sure to follow us at, at Credit Carson and at Paul Greenemeyer on Instagram. Follow the Travel Punks on Facebook and look for the Travel Punks podcast in all your podcast outlets. Was that everything? I think that's everything. No? Yes? No? Okay.